All right, good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us today around the virtual water cooler to discuss The Internet Ruined My Life, the sci-fi show that aired last night. Um, I'm Diana Graber from cyberwise.org, and our mission is to help anyone and everyone from their lives ever being ruined by the internet. So that's why we do these talks. And I'm really excited to have some experts joining us today to talk about last night's show. And I'd like to take just a moment going around our little square here and have everyone take a moment to introduce themselves and tell us a little bit about what they do. And I'd like to start with my partner in this endeavor, Sue Sheff. Would you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, Diana. Thank you again for putting on this wonderful blab every Thursday. My name is Sue Chef, and I am an internet safety expert, advocate, also a parenting expert. Um, and it just fell upon me way back in 2006 when my, my name was actually destroyed online and I won the landmark case for internet defamation and in, invasion of privacy. So um, here I am, and I've been an advocate and... Um, learning um, the hard way about repairing our name online, your good name and, and internet safety skills for the past decade or so now. All right, well, thank you, Sue, for doing these with me. And um, I'm really excited to have Dr. Dr. Michelle Druin, who's a developmental psychologist and also a recognized speaker on technology and relationships. She's joining us this morning to give us her special perspective. And Michelle, could you just take a moment to tell us about yourself? Sure. So thank you very much again, too, for having me, Diana. I, as you say, am a developmental psychologist. My research focuses on the ways in which technology is affecting relationships. I have a focus on romantic relationships, but I'm looking generally at how it's affecting all types of relationships, including family relationships, and how it's affecting development. And this issue today seems to be really relevant to my chosen area of interest. It sure is, and I can't wait to come back to you on that. Um, but right now, I'd like to take a moment and really thank Nicole Crowther for being with us today. Nicole was actually profiled on last night's show in a very touching story. And Nicole, um, I'm actually going to start with you. And I was hoping that you could give us a brief summary of your personal story in case anyone who's watching right now might have missed last night's show. Okay, yeah, of course. Um, I'll try to summarize it as best as I can. Um, <clears throat> I was a fan of the show Glee. Um, and I uh, went to a dinner party one night, overheard um, some rumors um, about one of the episodes, one of the prom episodes, and I lived in Los Angeles, California. So that's where, and that's where they filmed the show. Um, <clears throat> I did not work on the show. I didn't know if the rumor was true. I didn't know if the people who told me were lying or if they were telling the truth. Like I said, I didn't really know them very well. I was at a dinner party with a bunch of random people. Um, I happened to tweet out the rumor to talk to fellow fans and speculate and have fun with it. And um, overnight, one of the producers of the show uh, apparently came across my tweet and um, publicly responded and acknowledged it and confirmed that it was true. And then also um, said something to the effect of, of, you know, hope you're qualified to work in something other than entertainment, which a lot of people kind of ran with that story and, and said that I had gotten fired, I broke my contract, I did all these terrible things, and that's just, it wasn't the case. And it, you know, it was reported worldwide even, so. Um, yeah, it was pretty shocking how unforgiving the online world can be. And that's, that's really what struck me, the theme that ran, not only through last night's show, but all the shows that I've watched so far, which are really good, by the way, if anyone's missed them. They, they really are well done. And um, Sue, I wanted to ask you a question about that because it seems to me the theme, the recurring theme through all these shows is how unforgiving the internet is. Um, can you speak to that? Yeah, I mean, it's funny. You and I were discussing this earlier. It has been a theme straight back from one of the first episodes when we saw Suey Parks um, and, and Nicole, and then we have to go to Lee, Lee Van Bryan. Suey Parks was to cancel Colbert Lee Van Ryan was Destroy America. Um, and then we have Nicole. And then the one after her, we had poor Soraya. Or, Soraya, is that, I'm not, I'm not pronouncing her, her name right. And then we have to go all the way back to Justine Seiko, um, who right before she was about to leave on the plane, tweeted out, um, leaving for South Africa or leaving for Africa. Thank God I'm white. Won't get AIDS. All of these are reminders to all of us that the internet is extremely unforgiving, but it's not only the internet, it's people. People are un unforgiving. You know, the lack of empathy in our in our country, um, the lack of empathy 
um, from human beings as well as human behavior. So yes, I mean, it's very disturbing. I find this show is such an eye opener and it's the realization that the internet does destroy lives and it does take away a lot from us as well as it being a really great tool. It's human behavior that does dictate the way it can control, you know, our future as it has and done. You make a really important point, Sue. It's not the tool. And I, and I can't, we can't say that enough, you know, you know it's not the internet everything. that's doing lives here. It's people's behavior. And I really want to underscore that because I think it's a very important point. And I'd like to go to you, Dr. Druin, as a developmental psychologist who specials, specializes in technology, how common are these stories like what we saw about Nicole last night? Well, the first question is how often do they occur? And there's no knowing how often this occurs, probably a lot more than anyone hears about. Cyberbullying is very rarely reported and it's often reported to parents who don't widely publicize it and you just don't hear about most of the incidents that are happening. So I would like to think that it's not happening a lot, but my common sense tells me that it's probably occurring all of the time considering how rate, high the rates of cyberbullying are. In terms of the cases that have been highlighted, you're talking about just a select few of the most outrageous or the most egregious cases. And obviously the two stories from last night would be two of these that have been highlighted. Um, and I think this type of instance that Nicole went through is actually incredibly common. It's just that it's not as highly publicized. And it seems to me, Nicole, that you did suffer additionally from this then being perpetuated throughout the media, as has been said, and I'm going to go back to what Sue has said, that this is a very unforgiving culture. Monica Lewinsky speaks about this in a beautiful way when she, in her TED talk, and she's done various other um, you know, little article, editorials about at Vanity Fair and New York Times. And she talks about just how devastating the internet can be. So Nicole's case was compounded by the fact that it was then spread all over the internet and media sources picked it up. So this type of thing, luckily, is pretty rare that it's going to be spread all over. But as far as what happened to Nicole, I think incredibly common. Yeah. Well, well, thank you for that. And, you know, Nicole, I had just a thought as I was watching your show because, you know, an honest mistake, right? And it seemed like it was jumped on so quickly by the show's producer and other people who made your mistake go viral. And I'm just curious, did any of them ever reach out with an apology to you? No, it's after he made those tweets, it's like he disappeared and he never uh, contacted me or tried to reach out or or anything. And I don't think I ever really received apologies from anybody who had uh, threatened me either. Yeah, that's, it's shocking to me. And, and, and really, you know, what I think we're viewing online, unfortunately, is a fantastic display of lack of empathy. Um, and I know Sue and I, you, we talk about this a lot. Um, gosh, what, what's happening out there <laughs> with this empathy question? We want to ask ourselves is when will adults grow up? I mean, there's a, is it a producer or whoever it was for Nicole? Couldn't he understand? I mean, I don't, I, and this is nothing against Nicole. She was basically just a kid. I mean, she's gotta be 20 something. I don't know if she was 19, 20 something. She was excited. I mean, she was, I don't, I don't think there was any malicious intent. I mean, you can understand that. Where was the compassion on his, on his part? And why would you blacklist? A young, a young child. I mean, and I'm not calling you a child, Nicole. I'm just saying, absolutely no compassion here. Again, my question is, when will adults grow up? I mean, that, I, that's what I, that's what I'm seeing here more than anything. You're seeing a young girl being attacked viciously online, and I think it's up to us. And I'm sure Dr. Druin must agree. Because Monica Lewinsky's TED speech is one of my favorites. Yeah, um, I agree. I, you know. It's up to us. It starts at the top for adults to act like grown-ups online. And when he was seeing all the attacks and what was happening to this young girl, the 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 brutality of what was going on and the fact that she had to hire someone to protect her, the producer, in my opinion, or someone from the company or whatever it was, the network, should have stepped up and said, hey, this is not right. Um, it was an honest mistake. I don't think she would have intentionally done this. And this 
the, the malice has got to stop. And no one did that. You know, and we just, someone made a comment online that it's so easy to get a mob mentality online. And Dr. Joanne, I'd like to ask you about that. Is that what we're seeing? Is it mob mentality? Is it lack of empathy? What's happening out there? Yes, it's the internet provides us with this blanket of anonymity. It distances us from our actions. So we can say things, we can do things that we wouldn't do in our everyday face-to-face -face lives. We have a psychological distance from the cruel things that we say and really the deepest, darkest things that we feel might come out because we don't have any immediate repercussions. No one had to look at Nicole in her face and see her hurt and disappointment when they said things like, I wish you would die or I, you know, I, your, what you did was horrible. They, they didn't have to confront how it would make someone else feel to actually hear those words. They just could say it and then they could leave their computer and they could just step away for the moment. So um, you do see kind of a lack of empathy, but I do think that, that this environment is perfect for that. It's perfect for creating this lack of empathy. And then when you see a lot of people, it was a perfect comment by um, at DigiPsych. Yes, you get this mob mentality. Everyone else is getting up on her. I can do it too. And I'm justified because I have more than one person with me. I have a true partner effect. There are other here people here who are partners in this with me for hating on this person who's done something that we all agree has, was horrible and outrageous. Okay, so where's the empathy mob? <laughs> I want mobs of empathy out there. You know, Nicole, did anyone stand up for you? Did anyone tweet, text, post and say, this, this is a person who made a mistake, let's cut her some slack. Did anyone say that? Um, not too many people. There were a couple of uh, fans that tried to understand. Um, I did, I, I believe I was mentioned on um, Chelsea Lately, her show, and she kind of like, la she mentioned it real quick and laughed about it and was like, well, who, you know, you know she said something to the effect of, um, you know how many people have told have told me that I couldn't do anything and, you know, something something to that effect. And, uh, but that was really, yeah, not too many people kind of stood up or, and the problem was is a lot of no uh, news organizations were reporting the false story. So a lot of people thought that I was very guilty of this this terrible thing that happened and uh, i don't think anybody you know uh, looks further into it to see what really happened and that was part of the tragedy of all of this is um you know they just recycled the storyline and didn't fact check and and that's it's part of what made it so terrible yeah, you know and that's a really important point is that we're seeing more and more news organizations will pick up things from social media and report it as news it's an important topic that i teach during cyber civics with kids when we do information literacy is we actually look at stories and then we find out where the sources came from and it's shocking how much of this is happening in our news right now. So it, it really uh, stresses the importance of young people learning how to be great detectives when they read news online, because you really cannot today believe everything that you read. So that, that's a very, very important point. Um, and I, I wanna move now to our second story, which I don't know, man, this, this one blew me away because this poor girl, you know, just to summarize quickly, there was some sort of police shooting and she, commented it on Facebook. It was a young woman who used Facebook a lot and she commented on it and she chose the wrong emoji. Simple accident. She picked the happy emoji instead of the unhappy emoji, went to bed, woke up to a firestorm online and it, and it really did ruin her life. Um, I just, I'm still recovering from that story. So I want to go to you because we've talked a little bit about emojis. Um, what's your feeling on them? Do they, does it make online communication better or worse in your opinion? You know, I'm still going to stick with, I, I, I love the emoji. Um, I love the emojis on Facebook. I, I think it, it's been a really great asset to it. Because like I said to you before, um, I like the fact that if you see something sad, you're able to give a sad face if you don't have the words for the emotion. Um, this is a case where, uh, again, across the board, with everything you do online, you have to pause before you post. You have to pause before you click. And poor Sierra, she was in a in a rush, you know, as these young kids are clicking away real fast. And you know what? She, it, when when you saw her keypad, the two emojis were right next to each other. Right. And I've done it even when I'm texting. You know, when you spell check can make a mistake for you. 
or anything. I mean, I've sent the wrong emoji myself. And the best, you know what the best best one is, is when you look at Ellen DeGeneres, when she has those, you know, uh, the oops on the, um, the, uh, the tweet, not the tweet, the, uh, the text scene. Um, oh, she has something on her show, the oops on the texts. Um, or text your exes or something like that. It's hysterical, but they're, it's not so funny when it goes viral and it's a mistake like this. Um, I, I was devastated for Sierra. It was a- It was a hard, hard story to watch. And Dr. Jim, I wanted to go to you because what's your feeling on these emojis? How well do they capture human emotion in your opinion? Well, there are some things that are notorious for being misinterpreted online. Sarcasm is very hard to convey. The emojis have different meanings to different people. So the particular emoji that got mistaken last night was the cry face. And then there was a smile with two little tears, which is laughing so much you're crying. And I don't think that she thought that that one was actually crying, but it was just a mistake on the keyboard. But I could perhaps, and I have sent emojis that I thought were one thing, but actually mean something else to someone else. So it's just, they seem to portray an emotion a little bit more than the basic colon and parenthesis. However, what the emoji means to one person could be different than what it means to someone else. Yeah, it really gives you an appreciation for the human face, doesn't it? <laughs> the variety yeah. of emotions that we can convey with tone, with hands, with facial expressions cannot be captured through our technology. It's just another example of how the human being is so awesome, <laughs> in my opinion. Not, but not uh, the other thing we were talking about before the show is that, you know, why didn't she delete? And she may have the morning before. Um, but it just goes to show you that, you know, it takes a moment for a post or a tweet to get virally shared and reposted. So even if you do delete, someone else may have already passed on whatever it is you posted online. So delete, deleting is not an option for recovery for sure. Um, and Nicole, I wanted to ask you, how hard was it for you to watch Sierra's story last night? Oh, it was, it was definitely difficult to watch. Um, I think with her, I mean, our stories were so different. Um, but I think for me, most of the threats and everything stayed online and stayed in that virtual world, luckily for me. Mm -hmm. um, for her, it actually came into her real world and affected her um, and her entire family, it sounded like. Um, and that that is insane to me. But unfortunately, I can actually very much relate to it, too, because I, I had been in that spot where I had been scared for my life. You know, I, I did hire a bodyguard. Um, and it's uh, it's just sad to see that it, that it happens to so many people um, and that it is kind of it becomes more common, actually. And, you know, you can speak to that, Sue, because I know that you lived through a, a similar experience online. Did it ever get to the point where you were fear, fearing for your life or fearing for your day-to-day -day existence offline as well? We, I was. And it was, well, we had, I had received death threats and all of that. You know, we had, I had the gang-like mentality and the death threats. Um, I was scared, but the people that were threatening me were not in my state. And we did go and we tried to get... Um, protective orders, et cetera. But of course, this was 10 years ago. And they, I don't want to say they laughed us off, but they more or less said they couldn't do anything. And then we tried, my, when I say we, it was my attorneys. And I tried to get the FBI involved. And of course, law enforcement wanted nothing to do with it. And of course, they said their hands were tied. It's a really difficult world. Yes. And more than anything, you become very isolated. You, you live in fear. You believe it. I can relate more to like Anne Marie's story um, of becoming you feel hopeless. No one understands a lot like N Nicole, not so much physical fear, but more as I was really ruined because I was in my remember I'm old, much older. It wasn't wasn't social media was not as large as it is today. So it wasn't as um, it's exasperated today, I think. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, um, Dr. June, I wanted to ask you in your um, work, how often are you seeing these online mistakes spilling over to dangerous situations or scary situations offline? Well, my my main area of interest is in sexting. And coincidentally, I've just done a research study where I'm asking people about their sexual talk, their sexual intentions online, and whether or not those cross over into expectations offline. And it really varies by the individual. Some people 
really separate their offline lives from their online lives. So they don't and would never think of doing the things that they are saying or threatening in this case in an online environment. They would never think of doing that in real life. But there are some people who have a very solid integration between their offline and online lives so that the things that they're doing and saying online, they intend to do offline. So I think Nicole was totally justified in getting a bodyguard and in fearing for her safety. And as Sierra's story told us, she also had reason to believe that she was in danger from these threats that were occurring because there were people who would connect the things that they were saying in this online environment with actual offline actions. And it's just going to be individual variability. And I think, Nicole, you were right. Just nothing that you want to risk. Yeah, it's, it's you know, as we were saying before the show started, I mean, we all work in this realm and I thought I'd heard it all, honestly. And the stuff that I'm learning about on these shows is just so heartbreaking and so poignant. And they are such great teachable moments. I'm really, I really hope that more people will watch. And if you haven't watched them, share them with a young person in your life because they're terrific stories and they're great teachable moments in each story. Um, and I wanted to go to you, Nicole, and I'm, I'm sure you've learned a ton from your experience, but if you could summarize the most teachable moments out of your unfortunate situation and how it's changed you. Could you share that with us? Uh, sure. Um, it, two of the things that I want to focus on, which one of them I already mentioned is, um, you know, I think it's very important that you don't just believe everything you read on the internet. Um, I think that my generation, you know, we, we tend to just do that. We, we see it online. We're like, Oh, well, that's, that's the truth. And we don't look any further than that. I think, um, my story is a perfect example of how there really is, you know, another side to the story and you really need to fact check and look into things. Um, and another thing is, is um, you know, for, for kids who are using social media, and, and in my case, I was naive. I didn't know the power that I had at my fingertips. You know what I, know, you know what I mean? So um, you don't know who your viewing audience is. And literally just about anyone can come across anything you post publicly. Um, so just be careful of what you're posting and just know that it can be seen by anyone, especially if you you have a public profile. And I'm just curious, how much do you use social media now? Um, not nearly as much. I mean, this this was five years ago and, and now I have a full time career and I, I um, focus more on work and things like that. But I do still try to check in and especially with all this stuff going on, I'm trying to get on it a little bit more and, and socialize and, and kind of um, t get my story out there and, and try to connect um, with more people. Right. On, on this well, I'm noticing because I think the comments here and someone said that they think, says to say thank you for being brave and about talking about your story. So I'd like to thank you as well for your bravery. And I, and I, hopefully it's changed how maybe other young people will think about using the internet in the future. Um, and Sue, gosh, there's so many teachable yeah. moments, but from last night's show, what struck you as the most teachable moment? Slow down. I think everybody needs to slow down on the internet. Um, and especially, you know, the the younger generation, as, as well as all ages, we need to slow down. Um, kids on cell phones, especially that are using any type of social media on cell phone, you have to slow down and, and remember that the emojis do have different meanings to all generations. And I think that's, Dr. Julian made a really great point about that because um, that's another thought with, you know, what an emoji means to one person can mean something totally different to another po person. So we need to really stop thinking and slow down before we post any type of emoji or anything. Just slow down. Stop I mean, think. Yeah, stop, stop look and, and listen. <laughs> but I always say pause, but yeah. it's just slow down. Slow yeah. down, period. I was just laughing because it's, you know, the first thing you teach your children when they're little about crossing the street, you know, stop, look and listen. And it's <laughs> like now it's the virtual street the super highway <laughs> that they're on. So yeah. it's the same lesson, just in a different context. Yeah. Um, and Dr. Juin, for you, there were so many moments last night, but what would be your walk, walk away teachable moment from last night? Well, I'd like to echo the sentiments of Nicole and Sue that you need to be very careful about what you post and understand that although your intentions might be innocent or good, that other people can interpret those posts in different ways. So be extremely cautious about what you're posting. Pausing is an excellent thing. And I love your analogy, Diana, of 
this, you know, stop, wait, listen, uh, the crossing the street, this, this new virtual highway. You're not crossing the standard street. This is a very complex street that you're crossing. Additionally, I'm just going to bring up something that Sue said earlier, which is where is our mob of empathy? And maybe it should be called like a tribe of empathy because a tribe sounds like it would be something more supportive. So if you see someone else being cyber bullied in the way that Nicole or Sierra was, be brave enough to step in as you would if you saw someone being persecuted on the street and be the one who will say, actually, that's enough. I think this young woman needs to live her life and she needs to move on. And all of these things that we are saying are just really worsening a problem that she should be forgiven for. And Nicole, I hope that you have moved on, forgiven yourself. You still earlier in the conversation described this as, I think you said this really big thing. This thing that you did was meaningful to some people, but I think, you know, 20 years from now, you're going to realize as well that this was such a small moment in, in history, in your life's history. So I think you're going to gain perspective and I think people need to step in. Mature people who can then be vanguards for correct behavior, reinforcing empathetic behavior. Very well said. That, that was a great wrap up. And, and I think for my teachable moment, it's just simply teach <laughs> because, you know, it's just not happening enough. It, these are lessons that we need to teach kids before they go online. And you know what? I don't care what you teach. <laughs> if it's sitting down with your child and watching these shows, please do that. We offer curriculum called Cyber Civics through cyberwise.org. Please do that. If it's not that fine curriculum that will have kids practice this in the classroom. Um, for example, when I teach it, I have kids teach them skills on how to be an upstander and how to stand up for each other, creating little tribes of empathy. I love that. I'm going to start using that. <laughs> but I mean, we've got to do something because I just, I can't watch any more of these stories myself. I just feel like we've got to move beyond this and we have to be better users of the tools of our day. So last words, everyone. So I'm going to give you the last, your last words. Just what you just said, build our tribes of empathy. Everyone has to start learning to have compassion for each other and not break them down online. And where can people find you online? It's suechef.com. Thank you, Diana. Sure. And thank and Nicole, you, Nicole, for sharing your story. And, and Nicole, what are your last words for us today? Um, I'm actually finding my tribe of empathy, and I hope you guys will find me uh, on social media as well. Um, so many great responses from last night's episode. I can't even begin to explain how beautiful it really has been and how, how, how great it is. So I'm, I'm working on it. Thank you, Nicole. It's been such a pleasure to, to get to know you and, and the person behind the story. I think it's really been wonderful to get a sense of who you are. And kudos to you for having the bravery to step forward and to live through this and be an example to so many other young people. So I want to thank you for that. And finally, Dr. Well, June, I'd like to go to you to kind of give us your final thoughts on today's episode and the two shows that you saw last night. I think it's wonderful that now America has had the opportunity to see a real face, a real young woman, two real young women who they could relate to and see that this is not something, some aberrant, strange instance. These are women who are just like us, who've made very innocent errors and didn't mean to hurt anyone, but suffered huge consequences. So hopefully everyone can relate to that and be motivated to do something. And Nicole, I look forward to being part of your tribe of empathy. And I hope that we can all just move forward and do this and make a movement that will, you know, similarly contradict this type of negative behavior that occurs online. I love, I'm loving Tribe of Empathy. I'm going to, we're going to run into that one. <laughs> um, and Dr. Druin, where can people find you online? DrMichelleDruin.com. Okay. And um, please keep us abreast of your work. It's so fascinating what you're working on, especially in the area of sexting, which I think is such an important topic to, again, talk to young people about. Um, and I want to thank all three of you. You guys have been terrific. And I'm so inspired the day after watching what was such a depressing show, honestly, 
I'm so inspired talking to you and getting to know people who are really out there making a difference. Um, so I want to thank you all three from the bottom of my heart and also wanted to let anyone who's still watching us know that next week we have our wrap up show where we're going to talk about all the episodes that we've seen this season. And we have two really exciting guests that I cannot wait to talk to. Um, Ross Ellis, who is the founder of Stomp Out Bullying and someone who's uh, every blog I read constantly, uh, Tony Birdsong, who is an Family Safety Evangelist for Intel Security. They'll be joining us next Thursday at the exact same time. Um, and it's 9.30. So thank you all so much. And I hope to um, talk to you again and see the rest of you next week. So Thanks, thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank, thank you, guys.